Volatility is back. Wall Street was up and down all day today, yet we still finished somewhat flatlined. But everyone is scratching their heads wondering what's next. Welcome, everyone, to Buy, Hold, Sell. I am your trader, Todd Schoenberger, and I am joined by my friend and co-host, Tobin Smith, out in sunny and hot Scottsdale, Arizona. We have a very special guest with us because Toby and I have been talking about fundamentals for the past month, and it has gotten us nowhere. So we figured, let's scrap that. Let's bring in a technician. Let's bring in someone who's a technical wizard that could tell us if this sell-off is going to continue. Chris Rowe, founder and CEO of True Market Insiders, is back with us on Buy, Hold, Sell. Chris, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. I don't know if I can live up to wizardry, but I'll do my best. <laughs> oh, yes, you can, because as we figured- oh, That's the only really time I've ever heard him modest ever, so I don't know what's going on. I, I, it, had to, well, it had to take wizardry to be, for me to be modest. <laughs> well, it was it was it was a list of one, so we knew we had we knew the right person to go to. So, Chris, I want to start with you because right now, I mean, it's obvious you have the stock market is just extremely volatile right now, and there's so many headwinds that are really seem to be pushing this thing lower. What are your charts telling us? Because I know the audience wants to know. Well. There's listeners that are probably kind of new to investing, and there's those that have been investing for decades. And it's the same thing over and over again. So for those that are newer investors, I'll remind them or I'll let them know that when you're at you know, the most volatile, fearful times for the stock market, that's usually the best time to buy. Some of the biggest gains historically come when the economy is crap, the geopolitical situation is scary, everyone thinks that the, the sky is falling. That's not what you want to sell. And I'm not saying, you know, you just hold on and go through all this pain and stress and everything like that. But I am telling you that this is going to be quick. You might get a little bit of a sell off. You might get a market bottom. Those always are scary. The market drops by a lot. But at this point, the market has already sold off so much that they're just about done selling. Most of those who are going to sell have already done so. You're at a, a, an interesting time. And this is totally normal for the stock market to be in this position right here and in going into October is... At this point, either the floor is going to drop out and the market averages are going to tank really quickly, but then rally right back up to where they were. So don't worry. Or you're going to get a bottom right here. Like this might be the bottom where we are right now. You're looking at the 200 day moving average. That's usually where you find some support. You're looking at a known price level where you typically find support or resistance, where you get a bounce, long story short. You're getting contrary indicators where people are overly bearish. It's a crowded trade. And remember how the stock market works. There are people that bet on downside movements in stocks. They're short sellers. What they do is they first sell short, and then they attempt to buy back, hopefully for them lower, and they capture the difference. So again, to exit their positions, they have to buy. And these are multi-billion dollar fund managers, and there's thousands of them out there. So what that means is just for them to take profits on the declining buy. position, just to take profits, they have to buy. So they're going to be buying alongside of bullish investors who want to buy on the cheap, and it causes a huge spike higher. You don't want to miss that huge spike higher. You want to be in the right sectors. Well, well you're right about the sell-off. I mean, in September, yeah. we had the Dow down 5%. NASDAQ is down Normal. over 6%. Normal. normal, 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 but but still uh, unstable, and it it creates a lot of angst for traders right now, yeah, and sure. and investors because you're right, the do-it-yourself investor, a lot of the FOMO people, they jumped in and they're getting burned right now. But I like the way you're 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 looking at this from that optimistic view, Toby. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I mean, Chris. I mean, Chris is the expert on the, on the charts. So he's making me feel good. But how about for you? Well, I think Chris gets a couple of things really right. I would go back and give him a little pat on the back for last year, because in October of last year, uh, he was essentially saying, you know, the bottom's in. And right. the first thing that he said to buy was semiconductors, which had the best run. So he gets to like two all-stars on that. Um, I honestly, I sort of go old school on some of this stuff. I mean, obviously, there's there's only one emotion in investing, at least in the stock market, which trades every day. It's either fear of losing or fear of missing out, but it's all fear based. Uh, and, and to Chris's point, um, well, I look at the levels that that hedge funds are short because I get that data in every day. And hedge funds are about as short as they've ever been, you know, in the in the real world, not in talk about 2007, 2008, but in the normal sort of world, if you can call what we're in normal, they're short. So that's set up for a bottom. 
um, the cash flows uh, and the flows into mutual funds, into uh, managed funds and not managed funds have continued. And so, you know, you, you, the market will tell us when essentially there's more bids than there are sellers. And we'll see that because you're, you're going to see that that bottom and then it'll test it again. But as Chris says, that's absolutely normal. And then you throw in the seasonality where everybody knows September and really up to October 15th, those 45 days have always been the weakest point. And Chris, tell me if I'm wrong, but last year, what was the date? Was it October 20th that the, the, the bottom went in and you said get long? Um, something like that. Yeah, I, I usually wait until the market rallies a little bit off that bottom first to say get long. But yeah, the market was way oversold, washed out. There weren't going to be many many sellers getting in the way of uh, upward movement. Yeah, and I, I, you know, the word oversold sort of sounds strange, but but oversold just from a, a simple basis means that the the ratio between uh, people shorting stocks, people selling stocks over the averages when they get oversold as we're seeing right now. As again, I use that CNN deal. It's as negative as you can you can get. It's as negative as it's been in 30 years. So that means sort of that everybody who is negative already sold. And then, th then there's people who have to sell because um, they're short or, or excuse me, they're long and they, you know, they are repositioning. And then the third thing I think people miss is that when I ran a hedge, a hedge fund and a mutual fund, we had a October, the, the mutual fund had an October 30th fiscal year. So if I had all these AI profits, if I was in early enough and I'm coming into the end of my year, I would be selling, I'd be certainly trimming, taking profits, at least get my cost basis back because I get paid on my performance up to October 30, 30th. Um, and uh, my my record for the year for my mutual fund would go in based on that October to October timeframe. So that adds some unnatural selling uh, that's just profit taking. And that's another part of this seasonality that, that is just part of the mechanics of the stock market. It has nothing to do with somebody being a wise, you know, wizard. It has to do with the mechanics. So I'm with Chris. This is as normal as it normally gets, irrespective of the fact that we have the highest bond rates we've had in, oh, you know, 35 years. We have the highest inflation rates we've had, you know, to 20 years. You know, there's a lot of other issues here. We now have oil at $95 a, a barrel. Um, that depresses valuations. When interest rates go higher for risk-free assets, what was down the most in the last 90 days? It's been no earnings uh, uh, tech stocks. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing yeah, I see here that's abnormal, Todd. That's what I'm trying to say. I, I got you. I, and, and hey, you're right. I mean, you know, we had Sam Stovall on the other day. He, he was very calming. I mean, as far as what he said, his words were, look, this is normal. Take it as it is, but uh, if you need to, just stay on the sidelines. But things are going to recover, and I, I like that mindset. Uh, so, Chris, what, Toby brought up oil. Oil has been rising. It still doesn't seem to be a headline story just yet, but it probably will be once Americans start looking at four bucks a gallon. It's a headline for everybody else. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, look, it really isn't. I mean, not yet. I think people are talking about it, but I don't think they're. It's it isn't it isn't leading the front page right now. But it will be, I think, right in the next couple of weeks. But what do you what are your charts saying? Because here today we had Exxon hit a, a yearly high. We had oil uh, the sector the S and P uh, oil and gas uh, index was up over two and a half percent. This seems to be a true winner right now, and it doesn't seem to be stopping. But are your charts saying that it's still a good time to be bullish on that sector? I mean, for the last few months, um, what I'm seeing is two out of the only three 45 subsectors of the market that are bullish, that have demand and control, and they're actually outperforming all the other sectors have been oil service and oil and coal. And then the third one is steel, three commodities uh, based sectors, so commodity stocks. I'll also say that the commodity itself, oil, is the strongest of the four major commodity groups. Now, commodity stocks don't necessarily have to trade with the commodity itself. So oil itself topped out about a year and change ago. And for the next six months, oil stocks, oil service stocks were the best performing uh, sector there was. In fact, they just continued gunning higher, even though in 2022 you have bear market, oil and oil uh, service were the strongest sectors there were. And then they were just so strong that when finally you reached uh, Q1 of this year, they had to sell off. 
all right, we'll give them a break. They had to sell off and God, they had to pull back a little bit. But then in June, they started gaining more strength than every other sector that's out there. And even in this market decline, they are the number one and two strongest sectors, oil and coal and oil service. So whatever's strong right now, probably is going to continue to be strong, especially when the market's getting cracked. These guys are breaking highs, as Tobin pointed out. Um, you want to think about that. And you also want to think about just as in terms of the broad market, statistically, as uh, Jeff Hirsch, I saw you had him from Stock Traders All Mac, I think on the last episode. You know, I, I actually spoke with him when I saw him out in California a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I interviewed him too. Very smart guy. And this this group, Stock Traders Almanac, you guys should pick up the book at least. Um, you know, they're on the money with the four-year presidential election cycle, where the pre-election year is the strongest year of the four-year cycle. So you want to buy on the dip within the strongest year. The second strongest year is the election year, so the year that we're going into. And instead of a, there's two types of bull markets. You've got where everybody's euphoric and nobody thinks any, everybody knows there's going to be a hangover, but they don't care. They're just partying like it's 1999. That's one kind of bull market. The bull market that we're in right now is the type that every individual investor seems to miss out on. And this is where you get the biggest gains. It's the early stages of the bull market. Nobody wants to touch it because of the story that's going on. But the stock market is actually a predictor or it gives you an idea, an estimate of the next six to nine months out of what the economy is going to be like. So when you have those big gains and market bottoms, it's when all this bad news is already coming out. So you have that euphoric bull market. That's not what we're in right now. And you've got the other type of bull market where it's climbing the wall of worry. Mm -hmm. You have all of these bad things stacked up like, like a staircase. And you remove these bad things, the stock market moves higher. You remove another bad thing, the stock market continues to celebrate. You don't want to be the person that only buys those euphoric bull markets at the top. Buy the bull market right now. You're in the early stages. And one last thing before I, I pass it back to you. I have not seen, and I looked statistically, you nobody has seen this much of value. Now, I'm not just talking about compared to the U.S. dollar, what's the stock market doing. When you compare the U.S. stock market to Commodity prices, international stocks, cash, currency, fixed income. I have never seen uh, since the second quarter of 2009. So again, that's the stock market bottom after the 08 crash. I have not seen this much value flow out of all of these global asset classes and into the U.S. stock market. That's trillions of dollars. These are folks who not only have a good understanding of what's going to happen to the future, but they create the future. They get people elected. They have wars waged. These are the people that control the world. All that money moved into U.S. stocks from May up until August of this year. So good. Thank God we have a pullback because I've been dying to see lower prices. I can't wait to buy, especially AI stocks. Yeah, that's some great stuff. I mean, and and I got to say, you bring up Jeff first. Jeff, uh, yes, he was on, on Buy, Hold, Sell. And he came out and he actually, his prediction was that uh, the, we're going to see the, the year's highs at the end of December. We're still going to see quite a bit of a rally. Wouldn't but also me. on that, right. And on that presidential um, analysis that he provides, when you look up, look at the uh, numbers with the incumbent, with the with already the party that's already in power, there's there's so much upside potential in the year prior of the election, the pre-election year, as well as the election year. So a lot of things to look forward to. It's just we have to get through this storm right now. So I do want to say this because, Toby, I want to go to you. But we'll, that's one thing that's coming up. Chris actually is having a big event for the public tomorrow. Um, I know it's going to be available uh, online. Uh, you can actually access, access it through your device, um, through, or, through your desktop, whatever it is. Chris, you want to give a little teaser? And I know we're going to get into it a lot on the second block. But what is it that you're having tomorrow for the public? Lockdown 2024. You want to be careful right here. Biden will do anything to stay in office. All right. He'll be ruthless. All right. And you're already seeing the headlines coming out, mask up, things like that. If they shut yeah. down the economy, it's going to do a lot of, of damage, not just economically, but to people who have to stay home. Uh, and there's ways to protect yourself from financial disaster. And there's ways to use it to make giant profits. I'm telling you at the live event, I'm going to be saying some things that I won't be saying on the recording. So try to make the live event if you can. There's also <laughs> going to be recording. 
you can go to Chris Rowe Trades. My last name is R O W E. So Chris C H R I S Rowe R O W E Trades. Hopefully you can spell trades. If you can't spell <laughs> trades, you're not allowed to go to the event. All right, we'll exclude you <laughs> from the event. And there's a dot com after that. So Chris Rowe Trades dot com to check out. Uh, the solution to those problems and to find, I, I'll show you exactly how I found that the two strongest sectors of the year were going to be semiconductor stocks. And as Tobin mentioned, I made that call in November of last year and oil service, which right now is the number one strongest sector, even more than semiconductor stocks. I got it from this one place and I'm going to show you that exact platform on this event. That's great. Chris Road Trades. I love it. And, and it's flashing on your screen right now. Dot yeah, com. maybe we'll put a QR code. If you see a QR code up, uh, maybe we'll be able to put that Abs on. Absolutely. What's flashing on your screen right now, for those that are actually watching this video, for the audio side, we will have a link in the description that will connect you right to it. So I know I'll be tuning in. It's going to be a must-see event and something you definitely don't want to miss. So listen, let's leave it on this block because we're going to talk a little bit more about that in the next block. But we also have to talk about Target. The stock is at a two-year low right now. I really have to get your input on this, Chris, based on the charts. What are they telling us? Is the bottom here or are we going to see some more selling? But we'll get into all of that right after the break. Please stay with us. Buy, hold, sell, brought to you by Crosscheck Management. Girl, you know it's been way too long. I got to get back in my zone. Ready for business? In brief. Bloomberg Briefs puts the power of Bloomberg to work for you with over 15 industry-specific newsletters available only by subscription. Each offers proprietary data researched and written by acknowledged experts. Top analysts, dedicated economists, senior business editors, all presented in a concise, uncluttered environment. It gives me the edge I need. Go to BloombergBriefs.com right now for your free 30-day trial. What does it mean to be a leader? It's taking my first solo flight. At the University of North Dakota, we lead our own way. Yeah. Yeah. There's something special about Friday night college football games. When you have a Friday night college game, everybody everybody's watching. Prime time, national audience from College Park. Friday night in the shell, nothing better. Welcome back to Buy, Hold, Sell. Well, we have a very special guest joining us today. It's Chris Rowe. He's the founder and CEO of True Market Insiders. And Buy, Hold, Sell with Crosscheck Media is working in conjunction with True Market Insiders. So we want to make that disclosure, uh, put, make that out, put that out there for everyone. Uh, Chris, when we left off in the last block, we we're talking about oil. You, yeah, we we're talking about uh, how the markets are selling may have been, may have finished. There, we might be on the brink of of another uh, upside surprise going into the fourth quarter. But one thing I want to ask you about is the retailers. Some big news came out from big box uh, retailer Target, where they are closing nine of their stores. The reason they're the reason that they're giving is that it's because of theft. Plus, they're worried about uh, the safety concerns for their employees. The stock is trading at a two-year low. The stock actually was dropping well before the news of the nine stores closing. What are your charts saying? Because I would think that from a retail perspective, you would these are the companies you want to invest in right now, only because we're about to enter into that critical holiday shopping season. But are your charts saying that the selling is going to continue? I mean, study after study shows that if you buy at stocks that are at lows, you know, trying to bottom fish, uh, it, you're, it's among the worst performing strategies that you can do. I, I do the opposite. I'm more of a momentum relative strength investor. I buy things that are in their highs going higher. I would stay the hell away from uh, retail as a sector, let alone target that's breaking lows. 
if, maybe if you want to sell short a stock to hedge your bullish portfolio, maybe if you want to buy some put options to hedge your bullish portfolio. And by the way, I'd only do that with like 5% of your portfolio. It's just the market will bottom out here somewhere. But is Target going to have a good time going into the, the end of the year with a Santa Claus rally? I, I don't know. I, I, I can't see a lot of people running into Target, you know, for, for Christmas anyway. Um, let's stick with the strong sectors and the strongest stocks in that sector. This seems to be the opposite for me. Why, why okay, pay well, for this okay. stuff, Todd? Why pay for it? Just get your 25 friends together and go in and steal this stuff. I mean, yeah, maybe there will be some Christmas shopping at Target. Yeah, They're just yeah. not going to pay for it. They're just not going to pay for it. I mean, that's I don't right. Know. Change your name, by the way, if you don't want to be targeted by criminals. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got to say that, uh, Toby, the stock is down 26% year to date. To year to date, down fifty one percent over the past two years. I mean, what do you think? I mean, your analysis probably Tom, telling you but something. When we started this show, you liked Target. Matter of fact, you recommended it like four weeks in a row, and I kept sending you a text. Are you out of your freaking mind, Pat? You did. You did. And Edit I, this I know, out. And I, and, <laughs> yeah, no, and you're right. Hey, look, I was I'm responsible for that. I said, let's go bullish on Target. Um, that was a very short lived. I'm glad I smart enough, obviously. Well, but well, yeah, but what do you think? Now, the retail fundamentalist that I follow um, said that at, at, the target really missed two cycles. Uh, they had too much stuff that nobody wanted last the Christmas before. And then this mm -hmm. Christmas, they, they again didn't have stuff that people wanted this Christmas. So I, again, I, we have one, we have a couple in, in this general area. And I go in the, every six months just to see if there's any living, breathing customers in there. And every time I've gone into a target, once you get past the beauty section, that's the only place they're making money. But if you that's go to these giant boxes, they've got furniture and crap and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. They have they have 25 rows of refrigerators and freezers. Who buys their food at Target? <laughs> so, I mean, they're just <laughs> not, they're food at they don't have the right product. They have too yeah, much they never of the wrong product. Um, the only thing they make money on is beauty stuff. So if you want to invest in beauty, buy ELF, ELF, buy, uh, you know, the uh, retailers who do that stuff. But it's it's just, to me, been in a downward spiral. I, I think we were saying in the break that that CEO has got to go. I mean, if, if, if you're yeah. going to buy retail, if I can, if I may, yeah. Abercrombie and Fitch is a is a better bet. Uh, Groupon, um, Berkshire Gray. Uh, thread up, um, you know, I'll, I'll give you the symbols. A and F is Abercrombie, uh, Group One is GRPN, Berkshire is BGRY, Thread up is T D U P. But the sector on my platform, we rank 45 groups in terms of price strength. It's probably the most important uh, measure that you can have when uh, determining what a sector is going to do. It's ranked number 36. Retail is 36 out of 45. It's at the bottom. You don't want to really be in that sector, but if you have to have some exposure to that sector, if you want some diversification, maybe look for a bounce, Abercrombie, Groupon, those are better stocks to own. Wow. Okay, that's good to know. And you would think, though, obviously, this is the season to be buying these retailers, but for a company like Target, they clearly are in trouble. And I got to say, I mean, Toby, you're absolutely right. You go into these targets. I mean, they're, they're, flea markets are better organized. I mean, there's crap all over the floor over at the Target, and yeah. they have so much inventory that's not just on the floor. As I understand it from our uh, people that are, that are going to these stores, they're actually saying there's a ton of crap in the back and there are no cash registers in the back. That's the last time I checked that. So, I mean, you when you have that as the case, there's, no, there's so much money that's just behind that wall and it's not being uh, uh, paid for. And I would imagine that's going to be a, a big yeah. uh, issue going yeah, forward. I, I, I like uh, Chris's Groupon idea. You know, again, one of the themes yeah. I've got macroeconomically, it's the 20% yeah. of a top uh, households by income that now uh, account for 72% of you know, of discretionary spending. Um, the bottom 80% um, is, you know, using a Groupon for stuff. And, and, you know, that's a great value. And the store at least gets traffic or it gets these. So that makes sense. Um, and, and it doesn't sell at a very high multiple, right, Chris? I mean, I, I last time I looked at it was reasonably valued. I'm not looking at the multiple right now. I'm just looking at the momentum. Uh, it's among the top best performing stocks in the group. It continues breaking highs. And I think it's, it, you know, it's pulled back. So you want to step in and buy a group on it. You know, I, I don't really buy, hey, this is going to sound bad, but I don't buy based on logic. I'm not I'm not buying based on the story of, you know, of what's going on. I'm buying based on what institutional investors are plugging lots and lots of money into. They're doing it for a reason. They did more research than I'm going to be doing on Groupon. 
Um, if you want to use logic though, I mean, target, you're usually not going to target.com and buying stuff. Groupon, you're going into the season. Uh, there's yeah. going to be gifts. There's going to be easy shopping, easy buying. This is discounting. These are coupon clippers. You're in a crazy economy and people are worried, but you want to buy an oversold sector. Retail, okay, Groupon. Cool. Okay, I like that. I like, that's a great, great, uh, some great advice there. Yeah, well, well, we'll see how how it all plays out. But you are right. I think when you start incorporating the technology aspect of it, look for the retailers that actually do great with technology. Nordstrom's another one, and uh, that that means they can have inventory control. Whereas a company like Target is just disarray right now. Uh, so so listen, we're gonna um, we are gonna finish it on that. But Chris, one more time, Chris Rowe Trades dot com that's where you're sending everybody for the big event tomorrow right yeah lockdown 2024 um i mean lockdown if you do get locked down yeah chris road trades whether we get locked down or not but chris road trades.com okay chris road trades.com it's a it's a free event i assume yeah okay that's good all right we just want to make sure the public knows it's that expensive if you don't show up oh i like that i was I waiting like for that. that i was totally waiting for that i knew that was coming 2024 what's well, flashing on the screen right now so that's outstanding so i know that the audience is going to get a lot out of that especially if you have uh some of those uh those other picks that, that you were uh teasing on earlier in the show so that's great so listen uh any last words toby as we close this out uh you know bottoms aren't made in a day the bottoms happen over a as a part of a process i i i look to chris to uh for the when the big money you know, starts coming in is is the sign that you know I'm looking for. But but again, we're in uranium, new high of the day. We're in oil services, new high of the day. We're in energy, a small and large cap energy service, high of the day. Um, there's tankers, oil tankers, our uh, LPG tankers, all at highs of the day while the market is going kablooey. You know what that tells me is that it's the micro set, you know, to say the market's going, look at the, the, the even weighted market ETFs, they're not down much at all uh, for the year. It's just the big, you know, magnificent seven pulling every, you know, the indexes down that are on market weighting. If you look through these glasses here of even weighting on stocks, and then you look at these crisis sectors and our micro sectors, we got some stocks that are up 30, 40% right now that you've never heard of that deliver li liquefied petroleum gas to India and China as much as they can get. And oh, by the way, the uh, Suez, Suez, the Suez Canal is now busier than the Panama Canal because the Panama Canal is closed because they don't have enough water. And all of a sudden, these you know trips are twice as long. You know, fundamentals meets uh, technicals, but the fundamentals and the yep. technicals both work. Buy it. I love that. And and for the audience, we actually have a very special guest next week. Fernando Valley is going to be joining us. He is the senior oil and gas analyst over at Bloomberg. He's going to really get into the numbers and really tell the audience what they should expect for the final quarter of the year in that sector. I know it's going to be a can't miss. So listen, so make sure you do go to chrisroadtrades.com for the big event. We will be having a description in and provided for everyone. Uh, check that out. Click on the link. Get to it tomorrow. You're going to love everything that Chris has to say. So on behalf of Chris Rowe from the Blue Market Insiders and Tobin Smith, I am Todd Schoenberger. Thank you once again for joining us on Buy, Hold, Sell. We'll catch you next time. Take care. Buy, Hold, Sell brought to you by Crosscheck Management. I want you to smash that like button. <laughs>